Hello, everyone. I see some participants joining us. We'll give you all a few minutes to get in here and get settled. Very good. We got lots of folks joining us. Thank you so much. And while we're waiting on everyone to get settled, if you'll just make your way down to the chat box, if you'd like to say hello, tell us where you're from, what you're excited to hear about today, we'd, we'd love to know who's joining us for the webinar. all for saying hello and talking to us in the chat box. We appreciate that. I'm kind of scrolling through and seeing who's with us. This is very exciting. We're going to get started in just a few minutes. We have a couple people trying to join us right now. We want to make sure we've got everyone in the room here so we can be prepared to answer your questions. Questions are already coming in. Very good. We've got people working on answering all these questions, so keep it up. here from Independence Community College. I saw that scroll through. Wonderful. I actually was working at Independence Community College um, not too long ago. I'm very familiar with that part of Southeast Kansas. So wonderful. All right, I see that we have a pretty large number. I think it's time to go ahead and get started. Great questions, keep them coming. My name is Heather and I work for Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society. We're actually your host today, as you see on your screen. Hopefully everybody can see my PowerPoint. Wonderful, and um, you're in the right place. If you're a, a transfer bound student or someone that's helping transfer bound students, um, you are in the right place. Um, so let me quickly turn it over. Sarah um, is my colleague at Phi Theta Kappa headquarters. And Sarah, would you mind um, just going to flip the slide ahead here and talk to everyone about the panelists today? Hi, everybody. My name is Sarah Reynolds. And uh, as Heather mentioned, I work um, with Phi Theta Kappa uh, with the College Relations and Scholarships team. And um, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. I know that. Um, all of our wonderful panelists here have a wealth of information to, to share with you that I think will be very helpful as you're considering your transfer options and preparing uh, for the next steps in your educational careers. So um, I am going to, um, uh, allow, as you can see on the screen here, we have representatives from Mississippi State University, Mississippi University for Women, Southern New Hampshire University, and University of Texas at Arlington. So um, if we'll just go in this order and allow uh, everyone um, to uh, unmute your mics and introduce yourselves to our attendees this afternoon, that would be wonderful. And it looks like Mississippi State University is up first. Hey everyone, glad y'all are here. My name is Hannah Pierce. I am the Assistant Director of Transfer Recruitment at Mississippi State, so I'm excited to be here. 
Hey guys, it's um, Ika McCarter. I'm the Interim Director of Admissions at Mississippi University for Women. And um, I have been at the W for 20, almost 25 years. So I have a wealth of knowledge and hope that um, all of your questions can get answered today. Hi everyone, I'm Debbie Lloyd, Senior Director uh, from Southern New Hampshire University. And um, I work on a team that visits all of you everywhere in all your schools. So nice to meet you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Rebecca Lothringer, Associate Vice President for Enrollment at the University of Texas at Arlington. And I also have Jen Lasagna, who will be helping me out with the chat today. She is our Director of Recruitment. We're so excited to be in, uh, involved today with this uh, visual college fair. That is awesome. Thank you so much. We also have Ron Filipowicz from Phi Theta headquarters, and he'll be joining us in the chat in the Q&A as well as all these representatives, um, the people that you see on screen, but we also have people off the screen that are also able to help answer questions from each of these four institutions. So feel free to ask away, I see the questions coming. And let's go ahead and jump in here to the next slide. And um, part of this virtual college fair experience that we're having for you, uh, we wanted to make sure we brought the most pressing questions to the forefront. And one of the things that most of you are already asking, I actually saw something about how do I get scholarships already pop up. So let me quickly take this over to you and show you uh, what this can, what my answer to any student who asks me about Phi Theta Kappa scholarships. You know, we get a lot of questions from you guys asking, how do I qualify for these amazing transfer scholarships, these amazing Phi Theta Kappa scholarships? And one of the things um, that I want you to be able to do after this session is use your PTK username and password, and you'll be able to go to PTK's website. And actually, if you want to take the shortcut, just go to connect.ptk.org. That's connect.ptk.org. Type in your username, which is your email address that's tied to your PTK membership. Put in your password from your Phi Theta Kappa account. And the magical thing that will happen here, um, you all can see my PTK Connect screen, correct? Perfect. So I went ahead and just kind of cut to the chase here. I used the Find Colleges feature on PTK Connect. I typed in the four names of our outstanding sponsors and panelists today. And just to give you a little preview of what kind of things you can do when you look up a school in PTK Connect. This is the only place you can go to find out specific details about your transfer scholarships that you're eligible for, your PTK scholarships, and also transfer friendly facts and photos and videos and information from these four schools directly. So folks um, like the panelists who joined you today actually took their time to go in here and add content for you all to look at. So this is a very good example of how you can pull up a list of schools. You can click this little heart to show those schools some love, to let them know that, they're your, their, fav that you, their school is one of your favorite schools. And so I would encourage you to do that. Look at the profiles, favorite the schools that you like, and this will help you, especially now when we're all at home, um, to do your research and keep it organized in one place. Um, so I'm gonna quickly pick on Mississippi State here and just show you what happens when you actually click a school profile. You're going to find a wealth of information the coolest part about this is it's all transfer information. So you're not going to find information here that doesn't apply to you. If you're somebody trying to transfer, this is where you want to get your information because it's all very specific to transfer students. So thank you very much to all four of these schools for taking time to go in, enhance your profiles, tell the students more about your schools. Um, and students, don't forget about that little tip. So let me cut back to the slides here. And you know that's my little piece on, on uh, how to qualify for scholarships. But let me move over now to the actual question that we want to pose to our panelists. Um, so let's just start with Hannah at Mississippi State. You want to talk to us a little bit about this, your answer to this specific question, how can students qualify for transfer and PTK scholarships? Great, yeah. Um, so for us, a student does have to have at least a 3.25 GPA. Um, so that's kind of our starting point. Um, now there's definitely more opportunities, but that starts us out for scholarships. Um, our PTK scholarship, you do have, this is another side of it, you do have to have at least 48 transferable hours. Um, now if you have under that, we have some 
like if you're an out-of-state student, we have some other availability. But you do have at least 48 transferable hours coming from the community college, preferably. Um, and then that scholarship would give you $8,000 over two years automatically, just with being a PTK member. Um, and then having a 3.5, which a lot of you guys do, um, that gives you more money to stack on top of that as well. Um, and that's included, and we have a non-resident tuition scholarship that also PTK students can stack on top of that as well. That's fantastic. Thank you, Hannah. We appreciate your feedback on that. And um, thank you so much for that intentional focus on transfer students and specifically PTK members. It's very rewarding. Um, and we have some students in the chat box that are talking that are currently or uh, recent graduates of Mississippi State. So this is wonderful. Um, let's move on now um, to um, Ika. Would you like to talk about what your answer to this question will be on behalf of Mississippi College for Women? Sure. Um, for students to qualify for PTK, um, they have to have at least a 2.75 GPA with at least 24 transferable hours. And we do a $2,000 uh, per year scholarship, stackable scholarship for those students that are um, members. They just have to show proof of that, whether it be on their transcript or they show uh, their membership card or something of that nature. Um, those students will qualify for the PTK scholarship. Absolutely fabulous. Thank you so much, guys, for making this a uh, seamless process for students, too, that um, they're not having to go all over the place and do multiple things. Um, once they're in Phi Capital, we hope that that really means something, and it seems like your institution values their membership, so thank you. Um, let's also move on now to Rebecca. Um, she's at UT, um, University of Texas at Arlington, and she's going to talk to you about her answer to that question. Absolutely. Thank you very much. At uh, UTA, we require that students have 24 transferable hours and a 3.5 GPA in order to qualify for our transfer scholarship. So we do it a little bit differently. So when you apply through admissions, you're automatically considered for a transfer scholarship. Then if you have a transfer scholarship and you upload through our My, Ma My Scholar Shop, MAV Scholar Shop um, site, your Phi Theta Kappa certificate, then we'll add a Phi Theta Kappa scholarship and stack it on top of your transfer scholarship. So our transfer scholarships are $1,000 to $4,000, and then we will stack another $1,000 on top of that for our Phi Theta Kappa students. Perfect. Stackable scholarships that, if you don't know what that means, you want to definitely take our PTK Transfer Edge program and make sure you spend some time in PTK Connect to learn this vocabulary. Um, stackable scholarships are awesome because it means that they're giving you something above and beyond what a typical transfer student would get. So very rewarding to be a PTK member and, and be looking at UT Arlington. So thank you all for that. Um, next, let's move right on to Deborah, and she's joining us from Southern New Hampshire University. Yes, at Southern New Hampshire University, you qualify for a tuition discount just being by being a PTK member. And that reduces your tuition down by 10% to 288 a credit hour. Um, and that uh, tuition discount is also actually extended to your immediate family members as well. And what you'll do is once you enroll, you'll complete an online form that helps uh, uh, self-identify you as being a PT PTK member and your tuition is calculated uh, at that point. Very good. Thank you so much for the tuition discount that SNHU offers for our members. Um, so if you're a PTK member, don't forget to mention to these schools, hey, I am a PTK member. Make sure you self-identify that you're part of the Honor Society so you can get the very best value for your education. Um, we have some great opportunities for you from all four of these schools that really do value your membership. So um, don't forget about that. We have a lot of questions coming up in the Q&A box. I know that we're not going to be able to have everyone speak to all of those questions just because we do have this, the preset questions here that we want to make sure we get to. But the good news is we do have folks joining behind the scenes that are going to start typing the answers to those questions. So keep an eye on that Q&A box and the chat box, folks. Um, we do have people responding to you on both of those platforms. So just a reminder on that in case you're wondering where the answers are to your question. Um, let's move quickly to number two now. Question two, who typically fits in, so to speak, or thrives at your institution? So this could look very different depending on each institution. 
Um, some of you have very strong uh, majors and career um, development programs, so maybe there's something there uh, where a typical, a typical student might look like a business student, for example, or um, non-traditional students, online students, those types of things. So let's hear, uh, mix it up a little bit, and let's start with Ica this time from Mississippi University for Women. I need to take myself off mute. Huh? Yes, there you go. You're good. <laughs> well, um, Mississippi University for Women, or the W as it's affectionately called, is a small liberal arts arts college in Columbus, Mississippi. Um, so I'll take myself, for instance. Um, I came from a small high school, um, was not looking for a really large college to attend or university to attend, and the W fit me very well. Um, we have um, what we, uh, what you say, 15 to one teacher student ratio. Um, so the classrooms are very small. Um, our total, um, I guess you could say, uh, student body right now is around 3,000 students. So again, very small. Um, and you're, it's very attentive that the students and, and the, the relationship between faculty and staff um, are, is very open. There's always an open door policy. Um, and you don't feel like you're just a body or just a number. Um, I always tell students about being a freshman my very first year and being in the largest class that I had, which was a science class, and thinking that no one was gonna care whether or not I showed up and the teacher cared. And so um, there was no getting around not showing up and not being present or, or counted. Um, we have a, a very competitive nursing department, a nursing program, highly sought after program, um, our culinary arts program is also viable and education as well. Um, whole lots of programs, but those are just, just to name the, a few off the top of the bat. Um, and we are, we're of course looking for students that are looking for a great education, of course, looking for a small atmosphere, kind of a, we're really a public college with a private school feel is what we are. Um, and we, of course, welcome any student, all students, but if you're looking for a smaller college um, where you can touch your, touch your, I guess you could say a faculty member or, or, or be someone that can get in touch with a, a faculty member right off the top of the bat or, um, and not feel like you are in a room full of a, a lot, a lot of people, um, then we're the place to be. We're, of course, have a very competitive um, tuition and room and board, um, one of the small, the, the, the most affordable in the state of Mississippi. And um, I, again, we're competitive in everything, every area. And if a student is looking for a great education, they can find it right here. That's great. Thank you so much for painting that picture for students, especially when we're not able to visit your beautiful campus right now. So that is really, really helpful to give them a sense of what it feels like to be there at the W. Um, thank you for that. And let's move now to Rebecca from UT Arlington and see how she would answer this particular question. Thanks, Heather. So with uh, University of Texas at Arlington, we are a fairly large campus. So on campus enrollments over 48,000 students, uh, but we have been named the number one choice of transfer students in Texas, meaning that we have a large number of transfer students that choose to enroll at UTA every year. So when you look at our incoming classes, Throughout the entire year, we have more transfers enrolling than we do freshmen. So it is really a largely transfer focused campus. And the kind of student that thrives there um, are the kind of students that are looking for a really strong academic background. We have very strong STEM programs, architecture, our nursing program is very well known, especially through its online program, uh, and lots of other small little gems that are in some of our other colleges. But what we do at UTA is we really work with the students with a focus on career. So for our, our transfer students coming in, and largely they come from close to us, but we do have students from all over the state, nation, and actually we're 10% to almost 11% international students at UTA. So a large number of international transfers come in as well. But for those students that are looking for a way to not only have strong academic background, but also to prepare themselves for career opportunities through internships, our career center offers um, interviews on campus, really to prepare our students for those careers that's the student that seems to thrive. Uh, we have found, we play, place students in all 24 of the Fortune 500 uh, companies in Dallas-Fort Worth every year. Our uh, median salary is actually the highest of all the UT system schools. And we've been ranked number one in Dallas-Fort Worth for social mobility of our students, meaning that 
when they leave UTA, they progress at a higher level and are actually at a higher socioeconomic level than when they first came in. So if you're, if you're a student, a transfer student that wants to come to a fairly good sized university, be able to get involved um, in many of our organizations, but also really are career minded and you're looking at the goal and that dream you have for the future, those are the students that thrive at UTA. Excellent, thank you so much. And I saw some links pop up from your counterpart, Jen, in the chat. So feel free if that was um, helpful to you, if you're a student listening, just copy paste. You can check out that link later. Um, but we'll also make sure that you have access to all the recordings as well as the chat transcript and the Q&A since there are a lot of links popping up there. So um, great, great career focus and, and information on, on how that, uh, how your institution is able to help students um, financially and in their career beyond UT Arlington. So thank you. Um, let's move on now to Deborah and hear from you on this particular question on behalf of SMHU. Oh, you muted. I'm sorry, Deborah. I think I muted you. If you want to unmute yourself. All right. Southern New Hampshire University is based in Manchester, New Hampshire. Obviously, they've been around since 1932. Um, we offer two types of learning, um, actually. In the campus-based program in Manchester, we have about 3,000 students who attend daytime classes with about half, half of them living on campus in dorms. Um, and we offer a, a scholarship for those students as well on a semester basis. Today, we're gonna to actually be speaking more about the opportunities for students to come into our online programs. So who typically fits and thrives in our online program setting? That would be a non-traditional student, perhaps a student working full-time after you get through with your associate's degree and you want to stay closer to home. Um, and maybe you might have a family or you're trying to just juggle a lot in your life. Um, so an online program might fit better for you. Um, the SNHU uh, program is delivered uh, through six start times a year where students would come and take one class at a time. And typically with that one class at a time, you extend about 15 to 20 hours a week in coursework. So the program allows you to take one class at a time. You can take breaks in the middle of your sessions if you choose to. So the programs will kind of wrap around your own schedule. Very flexible. Um, and uh, as far as uh, admissions and enrolling, um, we make it a very simple process in that um, we will go ahead and get your transcripts ordered online. We go ahead and, and pay for those on your behalf. So typically what we found with non-traditional students that if we provide a lot of hand-holding through your duration as a student uh, with SNHU that um, it really helps in, in providing you a great experience. Wonderful, thanks for that. And the flexibility of the start times and the multiple start times I know that's always a question we get. Will you take transfer students fall, summer, spring? And in this case with the online, we've got multiple start times, um, which might be very fitting for particular students. So thank mm -hmm. you for that flexibility. Um, we also have Hannah from Mississippi State that would be able to give us an idea of who typically fits in and thrives at um, Mississippi State. Sure, sure. Um, so for us, I would definitely say we are a, um, a kind of a big school field. We are a large public um, division one school, part of the SEC, so part of the Southeastern Conference. Can you guys hear me okay? My internet's being crazy. Okay, yep. um, so, but we do have a small college town, so in Starkville, Mississippi, so we do have that kind of best of both worlds, I would say, kind of that big school feel, all those still big opportunities, but then you have that smaller kind of college town where you don't feel like you're getting lost just driving around um, throughout Starkville. Uh, we were founded as engineering and an ag school, so that's probably what we're most well known for is the engineering component and the agriculture as well, but we do have 80 plus majors, so there's tons to choose from, um, ranging in interior design to architecture to education, business, um, lots of different uh, routes for students, so there's lots of different majors for students as well. I do get this question a lot. We do not have nursing. But the W 
Miss Anika was talking earlier, she, she's a good place to go if you want to even live in Starkville. Um, but we don't have nursing, but we do have lots of other majors as well. Um, we do have about 22,000 students, um, but that is including online. And we do have two other campuses in Mississippi, um, Meridian, Mississippi, and one on our Gulf Coast. Um, so that's obviously, that divides up some students as well and kind of where those numbers are coming from. Um, we do have students from all 50 states, so that's great. And then about 80 plus different countries. So we do have a lot of international students as well. Um, so we're able to support them with international services um, our Holmes Cultural Diversity Center and things like that to kind of support them as well. So that's kind of the gist, but there's lots of other things, but we can we can keep nailing, answering questions, hopefully get those figured out for you guys. Thank you. Perfect, Hannah. Thank you so much. And um, I appreciate the overview of the Starkville campus and the SEC football. And I think a lot of students, um, you know, would hopefully have somewhere that they can visualize that might be like that uh, maybe in their nearby towns but we know Mississippi State is um, very welcoming to international students and all types of students so thank you so much for answering that question too. Um, let's move on now to our next question. We're getting a lot of activity in the chat and Q&A so please take a look there because the same question that you might have in your head might have already just popped up and there might be multiple answers in there so um, keep the questions coming. This is great that you all are so interactive and engaged. Um, the next question we have for you, which actually will answer quite a few of the questions I'm seeing pop up. What resources are available at your institution after I transfer? So are there any best kept secrets or tips that you want to share with the student um, who's transferring in and really wants to hit the ground running um, by using the resources that you all offer. So let's start actually with Rebecca this time and hear about University of Texas at Arlington. Thank you so much. Uh, so University of Texas Arlington, we have a lot of your traditional resources that you would expect. Tutoring, your transfer organizations are very strong, a transfer orientation. Uh, some of the things I want to point out that might make us a little bit different uh, we allow students to be advised prior to orientation. So when you're trying to find out how you, where you want to transfer, you want to know what's going to transfer. And at UTA, we invite our students to please contact our advising offices and be advised using your transcripts before you actually come to an orientation and try to register for classes. So that makes us a little bit different. We have a robust uh, catalog of online courses. Uh, I, I think, I don't know if I mentioned or not, uh, but we've been named number one in, or number five in the nation for our online programming. So a lot of convenient class scheduling um, for our students. We have a lot of transfer students that work. So we know that you're looking for that convenient class schedule. To try to answer some questions from our students recently, our transfer students said they wanted to be able to have a resource where they could plan out their transfer while they're still at their community college. So we just finished our transfer pathway portal then put it on our website that allows you to uh, plug in your classes that you're taking right now and do one of two things. You can either see how those classes will transfer into your major or you can do a what if where you put in all your classes and you choose different majors and you see how those classes work and how much more you would have to take at UTA to graduate. So uh, that's a, a, something we just added for our transfer students to try to answer some questions they were asking us. Uh, our Career Center, as I mentioned, is a big resource for our transfer students uh, working with internships and also placement. And those are some of the little bit different things that I think our transfer students would want to know. One final thing I'll say, uh, we were recently named the number one uh, university for military students and their families. So we have a very strong veterans program. So if any of you out there are veterans, thank you for your service. And also, please know that we have a strong program that works with the veterans of our campus as well. Thank you, Rebecca. That's awesome. Thanks for the intentional uh, thought behind, you know, what are the students wanting and requesting and asking for and kind of delivering on those expectations um, for the transfer student population and our military veterans. So that's outstanding to hear. Um, let's move now to, um, I lost my lineup here. Did we hear from Ika on this one yet? I don't believe so. You haven't. Very similar to um, Rebecca. Um, we also offer um, ways for transfer students to kind of follow the trends of what they're doing in and out of class with our Student Success Center. Um, it is, uh, they're very hands-on with our students once they're on campus. Uh, each student is given a navigator that is uh, assigned to them 
depending on their college that they're a part of. Um, and the navigator basically keeps up with what they're, um, what they're doing in their major, uh, how their classes are going, if they're on track, um, basically what advisors would do, but they are a little bit more hands-on um, than you would have a professor to do. Um, also, we have over 75 organizations that they can choose to be a part of. And so, you know, all work and no play is kind of one of those things you want to promote is that you have to be a well-rounded student. And so take a break with one of our social organizations. Um, we have ways that students can be a part of um, being able to do service projects and things of that nature. Um, we also have uh, athletic programs that just recently came back to our campus that we're so very excited about. And so students can be a part of uh, athletics and intramurals as well. Um, and what else? Talk about organizations, Student Success Center, Navigator, Career Center. Um, pretty much that's, that's what we have as it relates to what transfer students are looking for. Um, we have a, a big population of transfer students. So if you look at our campus demographics, you would see that um, quite a few of our students or more than half of our students are transfer students. So um, we do have to keep up with what they're needing and what their trends are um, and what their needs are. So um, yeah. That's what the W has. <laughs> I love that. Thank you so much. The yes. navigator concept, that's, that's tremendous. And a lot of times you find supports like that for first time students coming out of high school, but the fact mm -hmm. that y'all are doing that for your transfer students, yep. um, that is wonderful that you're showing them some love too. So thank you for that. No problem. Uh, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, let's move now on to Hannah. You want to talk to us about Mississippi State and what y'all are offering for transfer students once they're there at MSU? Sure. Um, one thing that we, um, this has just been in the past couple years, but is our Transfer Student Association. So once you get to Mississippi State, we kind of have this opportunity where um, a lot of the times we've seen where, you know, transfer students come in and they are kind of having that hard time finding just a group to get connected to. So we've kind of created this Transfer Student Association. Um, they even have opportunities to be a part of like SGA and things like that, where a lot of the times transfer students get kind of left out of that side. Um, so of course, every year we're wanting students to keep getting involved with that. I know it's usually harder for them once they're juniors and seniors, but we encourage students to really get involved with that and really just kind of making those connections, kind of like some of these others have said. Um, I was an out-of-state student as well and went to Mississippi State as a transfer and finding at least that one organization or one thing that's going to get you involved. Um, we have about 350 student organizations, so there is a lot to choose from. It's just finding something that's going to kind of make that connection for you. Um, that's something that did it for me. For me. Um, there's intramural sports. Um, now, if you're looking for some other side of things like, hey, how do I get a job? Uh, the Career Center is something that really, they do a really good job, especially with transfer students of helping them through those processes. Um, they can even fill out a, essentially a whole entire form online that's going to give them job opportunities once they graduate of say, hey, looking at your online um, application, you could qualify for this job. So that kind of helped me as well when I finished up. Um, Co-oping with our engineering students is a big resource as well, which typically those students get jobs before they graduate. Um, so that's a big opportunity for them. And there's other majors that do that. Um, Honors College is actually a pretty big deal as well if transfer students actually can get involved with that. Um, it kind of, again, it, it is kind of like its own organization. It kind of gives you an opportunity to kind of have that select group um, a lot of those classes, if you take an honors course, they're not going to have more than 15 to 20 people in them, which is another great benefit of that. Um, as well as study abroad. I know a lot of students want to have that component um, of additional work, not just don't go into class, but having those other resources and not just honors college, but study abroad with honors college makes a big deal um, about finding those scholarships for students and things like that. So hopefully we can get students where they want to be after they graduate as well. Great. Thank you, Hannah, and I appreciate your personal experience and being out of state and being able to talk to the students about the communities that you found on campus. Um, that's wonderful, as well as the career uh, pathways that y'all are providing support for the students in that direction as well. So um, thank you for that. I know we got a lot of questions about how to find communities and, and where we can fit in on campus. So this is tremendous information. 
Um, let's now move to Deborah and hear about SNHU and what resources you're offering for transfer students once they're at your institution. Yes, well, we mentioned earlier about SNHU being able to conduct an unofficial transcript evaluation and Gina, my partner in crime, will plug in a, a little blurb there to show you how you can have that done. Um, we also talked about the ease of getting started, no application fee, and the fact that we'll um, order your transcripts and pay for them on your behalf. But really, um, your level of support it would be the same with us in an online setting. It's just a phone call or a click away. So we took everything that was available uh, in an in-person uh, format, we plugged it in online. So um, your academic advising, um, your advisor will follow you through the program. Um, our advisors and career folks are uh, stationed really across the country, so they're on your time zones. Um, in, in our advising area, for instance, um, they would go ahead and uh, register you in your class and get you set up over the duration of your program. So you never, you never have to think about what is your next class to enroll in. Um, secondly, our advising team, we have about 45 uh, excuse me, career advisors around the country um, who work over the duration of your program in any capacity. We do um, you know, various webinars, we'll do uh, interview tactics, we have students um, you know, do role plays, um, we offer internship opportunities, paid and unpaid. Um, we also offer military support. About 20% of our population um, are military students. And so you'll work with a military admissions representative and military advisors. Um, online accessibility center, an online library with 24 seven access, online student um, center. So students have opportunities to communicate outside of um, really their courses so they can uh, join clubs. We have a, a gaming club. Um, we have a PTK chapter. Um, we offer a writing center, uh, tutoring services. So kind of everything that you um, had in an in-person setting. And I just wanted to highlight um, a little bit about a student who recently came to us from the one of the Pennsylvania community colleges. And um, she highlights a couple of things. Um, she lived outside of, you know, in rural part of, Cal uh, excuse me, Pennsylvania. And, you know, she was a little worried about, you know, well, how am I gonna continue next steps while I'm working? And she wasn't sure about her career. And she said she was cautious about taking on too much student debt. And, and she commented to us that the format, the college, the learning experience, it all worked for me. And I graduated with a degree in psychology. And she said, it's been nice to not have to worry about how the pandemic may affect my classes. She said, it's nice knowing I'm still on track. It gives me peace of mind. She said, my SNU classes have been a constant and I can count that I can count on even in the face of so much uncertainty right now. So I kind of just wanted to give you a little bit about uh, the feedback we had from an online student as, uh, you know, just wanting to pass that on um, for you to think about it when you are pursuing your next steps. Thank you, Deborah. And while you were talking, our counterpart on the chat box did drop your phone numbers in there. So if anyone listening feels like the SNHU setup would uh, suit you well as far as pursuing the rest of your degree, then you'll have access to talk to Deborah and your counterpart as well um, after the session. So thank you for sharing the student feedback. I think we're all wondering how students think about your institutions, and that's really helpful to hear a student perspective. Um, very good. Let's move on now on to question four. I see lots of questions coming in about scholarships and about um, scholarship applications, about how to apply. We are almost there. I promise you the next question is about the application process. So we'll make sure we address all those cues and, uh, that I see in the box there. Um, number four, where can students learn about your institution to determine if it's a good fit if they cannot visit campus? So obviously we're all in the same boat. No one can visit campus right now. So what ways would you recommend the students who are listening, uh, what should they be doing to learn more about your institution other than coming to the webinar today? Um, let's start with um, 
Deborah, let's start with you again here on the top of the order and let me unmute or mute myself and you can go ahead and talk to them about uh, what SNHU, how would they find out more about your institution? Yes, yeah, so you'll probably see Gina Fidel plugging in some information. She's going to give you some phone numbers and she's going to give you some links. We have a landing page specifically for PTK members, so we would encourage students to go through the landing page. You can reach us that way. It'll ask for an email address. And then um, when your name comes in through to the admissions office, they'll know you're with Phi Theta Kappa, who is a, a partner of ours. Um, you can also uh, visit a, a landing page that we have for our community college partners. Um, some of you on the call from Dallas or from Bergen County um, uh, in New Jersey, we have partnerships with your schools as well. And you can find transfer pathways on, on the link that Gina is also going to provide. So either way, you can come to us uh, through those two landing pages, call Gina or I, uh, she can also give you email addresses as well, um, but we're really to we're, we are really here to handhold you through the next steps, and we can give you a great virtual experience. Tremendous! Thank you for that invitation to, for students to connect. That's really um, wonderful to hear that there's such a personalized focus and attention on students. Mm -hmm. Um, let's also now hear from Ika on this question for Mississippi University for Women. How are students going to figure out if this is the right fit for them right now? Um, first of all, by going to our website, um, mdw.edu, um, and then heading to, of course, the main landing page, clicking on admissions, and then transfer. And there they will find um, scholarship opportunities, um, of course, scholarships that list of uh, PTK and all of our academic scholarships. Um, and then that would encourage them to navigate through our um, specific majors and academic programs specifically geared to them. Um, of course, they can see uh, some of the other things that are going on on campus just on our main landing page. But if they're strictly looking at academics to see if it's a fit, they can go by the academic pages. Um, and then mainly looking at what the requirements are to um, get into the campus or get into the W, which is a, um, at least a 2.0 GPA um, and 24 hours at, um, to come in as it relates to being admitted. Um, scholarships, of course, as I mentioned earlier with the PTK, um, 24 and, and 2.75, I'm getting tongue-tied. And then with the academic scholarships, our um, bottom line, I guess you could say, is $500 per year. 275 GPA and at least a 24 um, transferable hours. Um, <clears throat> we do look at all transcripts and community college university. And if you're transferring from a university, the um, transfer scholarship applies as well. So we don't just look at the community college side, we look at everybody. So um, yeah, just come on over to our page and check it out. There are other things, of course, they can, can see on the website, but I would definitely look at the main page um, to be able to navigate through. Excellent. Thank you so much. And the reminder about the scholarships piece, there's always kind of two sides to consider when you're looking at fit, you know, you want academic fit. Uh, of course, there's three sides, social fit and then also financial fit. So that becomes very important to encourage students to investigate that scholarship page as well. Um, wonderful stuff. Thank you so much. Uh, let's move now to Rebecca and hear from UT Arlington on this question. Thank you very much. And I'm going to give a shout out to Michaela because she is blowing up the chat room with questions about UTA. So yay. Thank you for doing that. Uh, this is the question she started out with like in the first five seconds, I think we were live. I saw her pop this in there is how do I know if you're the right fit? So for UTA, it, of course, this is a weird time. We all know this is such a strange time and students for you guys trying to figure out how to navigate and make choices during this time, bless your hearts. And all of us on the university side are trying to figure out how to make sure we get you the right information that you need. So what you'll see at UTA is we put a lot of things online, things that didn't used to necessarily be what we would push. You know, we want you to come to campus, but now our virtual tours um, are being highlighted. Uh, we've changed some of our tour videos to drone videos so you can see the entire campus very quickly. Our housing, um, we have quite a bit of housing on campus. They went to those really cool virtual tours where you can see like a dollhouse. If you've ever looked at um, houses with your parents or on your own, and you can go in and do a virtual tour of the housing, that's what our housing looks like now. 
So you can go in and actually see what it would be like to live in each one of these and act like you're walking through the different apartments or residence hall rooms. We have extended our chat. So our chat is monitored by our staff and by our students. And our chat hours are now Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. and on Saturdays from 8 to 5. That was an extension of where we used to be because we want you to be able to talk to us and ask us questions. Our counselors, and we do have specific transfer counselors that work with our incoming students, they are having office hours. So they're virtual office hours and we're about to launch an appointment scheduler. We can actually schedule an appointment with one of the admissions transfer counselors to be able to talk to them about your admissions and any other questions you might have. And the final thing that we've really done to try to give you a chance to learn more about us is we're converting a lot of our on-campus events to virtual events. So we're using a platform, College Week Live. If you've never heard of it before, you might check it out. And uh, starting next week, we'll have what we're calling Transfer Tuesdays. We believe they'll be up and ready to go next week. So every Tuesday, you'll be able to log in as a transfer student and interact with our transfer counselors, find out more about UTA, ask us questions, and through conversations with you that way, of course, you can always email us. Um, our main number is ringing actually to our counselors. So you're welcome to call our main number. I know Jen is putting up our website and our phone number now, I'm sure as I speak, uh, but call them because it's actually ringing people's homes and we're answering our, our main phone from our houses at this point to talk to you. So we just invite you to reach out to us. Uh, we are trying to reach out to you, but reach out to us so that we can make sure that we get your questions answered and we can show you what kind of fit we could be for you. I know that you'd be happy with what you find. Wonderful. I'm so happy to hear the virtual tours um, are in place and that might be a good starting point for anyone that's interested in UT Arlington and then, you know, follow up with some specific questions after you kind of watch that tour and maybe the light bulb will go off on what questions you have. Mm -hmm. um, that's perfect. Thank you. Uh, let's move now to last but not least Hannah from Mississippi State and let's hear about where or how can students figure out if this is the right fit institution. Sure. Um, so I definitely kind of a loaded question, but I'm going to kind of start with the kind of virtual side of it, kind of how we're doing things right now. Unfortunately, of course, we can't be on campus um, and we can't have people come on campus, which we feel like that is really a big kind of kind of a icebreaker for students, obviously, to really get a feel of campus and kind of see what they're stepping into. Um, but on our website and Lauren Porter, she is one of our other transfer counselors. She'll probably put this in the chat in a minute, but we do have on our admissions website a virtual tour as well. So you can kind of get a feel of as if you were walking around campus and kind of some of the things you would see. Um, and you can look at different buildings and things like that. We also have Monday through Friday, we have a virtual like campus presentation. Um, it really depends on the time. It's usually either at 1 or 4 p.m., but you can sign up for those on our campus visit website. And essentially, it's kind of something similar because what we're doing right now where it's a um, presentation type atmosphere, but you have the chat as well. So you can ask those questions and it's usually a small um, kind of usually no more than probably 10 to 15 people. And so it's really easy to get those questions answered and kind of walk through that with an actual admissions counselor. Um, we also have, well, we're going to be starting to do more of like a transfer question answer type of situation, just like this is as well, um, just for students who have um, just really specific transfer questions. Um, but we do have um, our work phones home with us as well. So text, call, email, all that works for us. Um, obviously, we're working as many, many of you other guys were working nonstop right now just to try to get questions answered and um, help those students figure out what really is the best fit for them and help them through the whole entire process because we know it's a little more difficult with trying to get transcripts and things like that. But here we're here to help you guys figure out that as well, even if it's not necessarily, you know, what's my next step, but, but how do I get to my next step? So we're here for that as well. So. Awesome, awesome job. Yeah, we had. I know at, back in my day as a transfer admission counselor, I always wish more people would call me on the phone. And I think now is the perfect time um, for everyone that's listening to pick up the phone and actually dial the number um, for, these, for these representatives because they are home and they are working and they wanna actually hear from you because we can't just have all these people drop in and visit campus like the old days. So please, please, please take them up on the offer. It's not scary. They're talking to you right now. They're very friendly people and they want to hear from you. So um, they would love a phone call or love an email from you, I'm sure. Um, that's great advice. Thank you very much for that. 
let me move the slide. I'm sorry about that. I got to transition over to question five. Um, when should transfer students apply and how competitive is admission? I know one thing that students are, are hesitant about, even if they're a really tremendous high achieving student, sometimes there's a belief that maybe there's only a certain number of students that can fit in the puzzle at, at that school. So um, if you could speak to us a little bit about meeting those transfer mission requirements, are they gonna be offered admission? Is there a wait list? Is there just a small amount of offers that will go out? I think students all are just really nervous about that because it's a big step to put yourself out there like that. Um, we are also getting questions about application fee waivers and um, should they finish their associate degree first? Um, so any of those types of things that y'all feel comfortable addressing about your transfer admission process, I think that would go a long way. Um, let's start with Hannah this time from Mississippi State and talk to us a little bit about this process. Sure. Um, I'm going to try to be quick because I know we're running out of time, but there's a lot of stuff I want to say with this. Um, I feel like it was a pretty good smooth transition, at least for transfer students on my end. I feel like that's one thing that we really do a good job of, of just really getting those students through that process. Um, obviously, the application, of course, is online open for our students for us right now. Uh, we admit students up to the 10th day of class. Now, I do not encourage students to do that whatsoever, <laughs> but if that's the case, Nicole, comes down to it we we admit students up to the 10th day in class so you have those options um, all we usually need is the application application fee and your official transcript from whatever community college or if you attended a university we would need all those transcripts so as long as you can send those official to us um, I haven't seen any community college that do not have electronic availability to send those electronically to us. I mean, there may be some out there, but I haven't seen any yet. Um, but it's usually a pretty seamless process of getting those sent over to us without you actually having to even speak to anybody. Um, so there's that availability and that's probably for a lot of these other guys as well. Um, but that's all we need. We don't need your ACT scores or your high school information. We shouldn't need that um, unless you just haven't completed at least one semester. Um, if you haven't completed a semester yet, now we will need high school information. Um, for us, we have a rolling admissions process, and as long as you meet the qualification, you're going to be admitted to Mississippi State. All you need is a 2.0 for us um, and have completed at least 15 transferable hours. Um, so the admissions part, especially everybody in here is probably PTK, so they're probably way above that GPA, so um, you guys wouldn't have to worry about that necessarily. Um, now for us, again, you do have to be admitted. Uh, to be able to fill out the transfer scholarships, um, our scholarship application. Um, now, most of our scholarships are automatic, so if you meet the qualification, you get it. Um, we actually do not cap scholarships, um, so that's another kind of perk. Again, we award students up to the 10th day of class, so if you meet it, you get it. Um, our, we have and that's even for non-resident students. So if you have at least a 3.0 GPA and have those 48 hours, you would qualify for that um, $23,000 scholarship um, to stack on top of Phi Theta Kappa. So there's lots of flexibility there. We try to award as much as we can um, for you guys because we know typically that's really what you guys are looking for are those scholarship opportunities to help cover out of state or help cover tuition um, and kind of walking in through that process. Um, so I do feel like we do a pretty good job of just through that transfer process. And that's what we're here for too, the transfer counselors, um, to help figure out what you're lacking um, on RM. But we also have um, our, trans our application. When you log into your actual application, you can see what you're missing. So if you're wondering if you've sent your transcript, you can log into your application and it will tell you, hey, you are missing your Independence Community College transcript. So it's all right there for you guys as well. So. Excellent. So I hope that um, the folks who are asking about how competitive, how is extracurriculars weighed versus GPA and scholarship essays and those types of things. Um, it sounds like Mississippi State at least is making this a pretty straightforward process and um, they have an unlimited amount of scholarships in terms of they're not just giving out a, a certain number like 10 students earn a scholarship. So unlimited or not capped means basically that they have a lot of opportunities to give out money to the students who qualify for that. So tremendous. Thank you for explaining that, Hannah. Um, let's move to Ika. If you want to talk to us a little about Mississippi University for Women and how when should transfer students apply? I'm going to feel like a parrot right now of Hannah's. 
but because we're, of course, in the state of Mississippi, our admissions policy and criteria are pretty much the same. Um, students with the uh, at least 15 transferable hours um, up to, well, I'm sorry, um, we look at the 30 hours, specific hours for students to be admitted. Um, but if they have 15 or more, um, we can, of course, look at their high school transcript and ACT score to get them admitted as well. So we have, we have a couple of different routes that students can get, uh, get into um, where there is no application fee. And um, once a student has applied, uh, presented their transcript um, to us, we do a 24 to 48 hour turnaround with the evaluation process. Um, what we're trying to, of course, during this time is a little bit crazier. Um, and the application for admissions and scholarship application serve a dual purpose. So once you apply for admissions, if you get admitted and qualify for a scholarship, about a week later, you will be, um, we will let you know what your uh, eligibility is for scholarship. So they only have to fill out one application. Um, what else? Do a turnaround, 15 hours, da, da, da. Um, Also, there is an electronic way for scholarship, um, for uh, applications, of course, to be forced to receive them, as well as transcripts. Um, students can also log in and see what they're missing. We do, once a student is um, received an application, we send out a letter basically saying, hey, these are the things we're still looking for. Um, don't forget to send this or that in. So we are notifying them pretty regularly as, as it relates to what they need. Um, also, the immunization record is something that we'll have to have as well. Um, all students have to have those in order to be uh, registered for classes. So again, pretty much cut and dry. Um, again, apply. Once you've applied, gotten admitted, you if you qualify for scholarships, we let you know about a week later. Um, and also students can apply up until um, about seven days after classes here. So uh, there is no deadline or cap on that um, as, as it relates to when you can apply. Uh, we will admit them at the ninth hour, it feels like sometimes. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Awesome, thank you. And I hope the students who are asking, there's a lot of scholarship questions. How do I write the best scholarship? How do I get the most money for scholarship? It seems like the schools we've talked to so far, at least uh, on this question, are not requiring a scholarship essay for you to qualify for a scholarship. So the good news is, if you're a student that's applying, it's a one-stop shop um, in terms of that scholarship essay being the same for the admission um, application, at least at uh, Mississippi University for Women just pointed that out. So. Thank you for these questions and your concerns, and um, we'll keep it rolling here and see if we've got some more information um, from Rebecca at UT Arlington about the transfer admission process. Thank you very much. Uh, again, a little bit of a parent here. Uh, we have tried to streamline our admissions process for transfer students to make it really simple to get in. Uh, students are considered transfer uh, once they have 24 college level hours, and then uh, to be automatically accepted, you need a 2.25 GPA. Uh, as large as we are, we do not have a specific number of transfer students that we are going to allow into our class and then say no more. We continue to admit students. If you meet the requirements, you're admitted. So you're not going to find a wait list. You're not going to find a no because we're full. Uh, we will continue to work with you. We do on our website, you'll see we have priority dates uh, for each one of our semesters and those priority dates might seem kind of early. But those are just priority dates. They're not the final date that you can apply. We want students to know that you can apply after that. And we continue to work with students past our priority dates, but the priority date helps you get the best scholarships, the best financial aid, the best housing, and the earliest opportunity to register. So we recommend that transfer students look. So for the fall semester, we say apply by the latest early spring before the next fall. And so it just kind of rotates like that for each semester. But we do um, want to keep our registration, our, or our application and our registration as easy as we can for transfer students. And uh, we'll work with you. Just give us a call. So uh, our party date, I'll say February 14th for this pat or for this fall. Don't pay any attention to that. Uh, we are still taking applications, obviously. And uh, one of the questions I know that Heather said has come up about scholarship or application fee waivers. So the best way to get a fee waiver for UTA right now, I am uh, submitting a proposal to try to help a little bit more with this COVID situation. Uh, but right now, attend one of our events because we've been able to use our events as application fee waiver um, application drives. So watch for events on our website and or follow us on social media and watch for those opportunities. 
And we've been able to give away a lot of fee waivers by doing that. And we do have an application fee, so this is a good way to be able to capitalize on that. And as I mentioned, we're trying to get Transfer Tuesday started next week. So watch that for an opportunity to perhaps be able to apply for free. That's awesome. Yeah, I know back when we used to visit campus, that would be a way to demonstrate interest and really show the love to those schools that you're interested in. So um, Rebecca is giving you an alternative way to do that. So attend some of these virtual sessions and that will be counted as demonstrating interest, which can be a factor in um, you know, whether or not a, a school feels that you're pretty serious about them or not. So um, wonderful, wonderful advice. Thank you. Um, I think last but not least on this particular question, and then honestly, I think we have the last question pretty much answered, but we'll give you some closing remarks and answer some last minute questions here. Um, but let's go ahead and hear now from Deborah at SNHU. Yeah, so we at SNU uh, in, encourage us, uh, community college students to complete their associate's degree. Um, it, it benefits you as a student to have a credential, this credential right there after you finish the degree um, to perhaps help you in a stepping stone toward a job, for example. Um, we also encourage you to complete it because um, it, it also helps the community college because they like to graduate students. We're all here um, with the same goal. We wanna help students until they complete a degree. So maybe just consider that when you're thinking about transfer that um, to have a credential in hand is, is really worthwhile. So uh, when should you apply? So many of us are, uh, have uh, rolling admissions. And, and what that means is we have multiple start times a year. SNHU has six and our classes move really every eight weeks. So if you would start a class with us, let's say you applied and you thought you'd want to start a class at the beginning of May and then thought, oh, oh gosh, that's a little bit stressful for me. I want to take some time off. Well, that's no problem. You can then go ahead and start the next eight week session, which would begin at the end of June, eight weeks later. So um, it gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, we have open enrollment. So as long as you fulfill the requirements of admission, you're in, you're a student at SNHU. And so um, Gina has kind of plugged in all the ways that we would get you contacted with admissions folks or ourselves. Um, in the in the chat box. So hoping you'll take those next steps with with any of us. Thanks. Thank you so much, Deborah. And that sounds like a pretty seamless process that you figured out for the transfer students. And mm -hmm. like earlier, you talked about being on campus versus being online and you've created a, a Southern New Hampshire University experience online that parallels what the campus based students get. So mm -hmm. um, wonderful, wonderful stuff. I hope that the, the diversity of the panel today has been helpful for the students who are here and considering and weighing their options. You have a lot of time to think about a lot of things right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm glad that you all find the value in thinking about your next step as far as your degree and uh, you know earning that academic credential. Um, we are at the end of our time together, and I tried to post a hurry up, let us know your last questions um, uh, thought there in the chat box. So um, I honestly think we have all covered why we think our institutions are transfer friendly by just talking about your processes and resources um, and being so generous with uh, sharing phone numbers and information with students. Um, I'm going to wait for some Q&As to come in just another second here and any last minute chat questions. Um, so if you're still on and you have a burning question that you want to get answered, now's your chance. Um, but I am going to sw switch ahead just to this slide to show one last thank you to our, our panelists. And these are our sponsors of PTK Virtual Catalyst, which is our annual convention that we've moved online that's happening tomorrow and Friday. Um, and we just want to say one last big thank you to these supportive institutions, Mississippi State University, Mississippi uh, University for Women and W. SNHU and UT Arlington. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to give you contact information. So as we're going to move down and check the chat and Q&A box one last time here, um, please, please, please write down these email addresses or use your phone and take a picture real quick or however you do screenshots um, to make sure you capture information. Um, we've got a lot of uh, love coming through on the chat box right now, which is wonderful. 
Um, and does anyone on the panel have any last things to say, even if it's just goodbye and good luck? I don't want to cut everyone off, but um, Aika, did you have any last thoughts? I'll start with you. I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to share MUW with so many students across the country, um, to tell everyone to stay safe, um, to also keep plugging and chugging along. Uh, don't get discouraged with all of, of everything that's going on. Um, these colleges are still here. We're still waiting to serve you. Um, and we can't wait to see you in the fall, whether it be online or face-to-face. -face. So be safe. Thank you, Aika. Same to you. And Hannah, do you want to tell us anything? Last minute sign off here from Mississippi State. Yeah, sure. Thank you guys. Again, thanks for letting me be here. I'm excited to see all the chats asking questions about MSU specifically. That was wonderful. But again, me and Lauren are here for you guys. Um, if you have questions and of course anybody in our admissions office. Um, but we're here for you guys to walk through anything. Don't worry and stress out about at least coming to the university. We'll, we're, we'll help you out with that side of things and help you get all those questions answered. So that's what we're here for to help you make that process seamless. So thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much for that and stay safe. Rebecca, how about you from UT Arlington? Thank you so much. I wanna thank everybody for being here and thank you for giving me a chance to uh, be here today as well. I'm echoing what my uh, fellow uh, transfer folks here say, uh, reach out to us. We're all here for you. Uh, like uh, Hannah said, don't worry. Uh, no matter what happens tomorrow, we're gonna be here. So uh, stay safe, stay well, stay home. We're gonna see you back on campus as soon as we can and uh, online or on campus. Uh, we're here for you at UTA. Uh, we have our, our new slogan has been students first. And uh, now it's students first, online or in person. Uh, we still want to see you, but thank you for being here with us today and reach out if you need us. Thanks, Rebecca, and stay safe. We appreciate your time. Deborah. last but not least, we just had a student tell us they're very interested in coming to SNHU. So what do you got well, today? <laughs> well, great, well, great. I, I think all of us today, uh, all of the institutions here would say PTK students are high caliber, high achieving students, and all of us would be honored um, to have students of, of your caliber uh, at our institutions, but um, just hang in there. These are tough times, but you'll get through them and you'll be so thrilled you kept plugging along at your education. It's, it's, uh, it's just something to be so proud of. And good luck to uh, everyone and um, thanks for the panelists and all the work that PTK does in support. Thank you. Of course, we are very happy to have partnerships with all of you guys. Thanks so much. I see some folks saying Hail State, hopefully. Um, <laughs> uh, we got some great chats. So thank you all very much. And students, definitely hang in there. You've got all these people waiting to support you and very excited about your achievements. So congratulations on uh, sticking through all of this and keeping your confidence and your attention on your uh, academics. Uh, that's really difficult to do. So great job there. Um, thanks to the panel. Thanks to the schools who support Phi Theta Kappa members um, that joined us today. And we will hopefully get to see you next time at our annual convention. And maybe you can meet all these smiling faces in person um, if you're still going to be pursuing your community college degree. Um, wonderful stuff. Thank you so much for being here. And have a great rest of your day, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.